Right now, I think we're doing a better and better job of managing concussions when they happen, partially because doctors are getting better, partially because uh, tools are getting better, and partially because the law is requiring you have to see a doctor. But what the, the big missing piece that no one's talking about nearly enough is the fact that we simply aren't diagnosing enough concussions. So of the, you know, the, it, no matter how you slice the data, it's clear that somewhere between 80 and 95 percent of concussions are not diagnosed. And if you don't believe that, it's because you haven't done your work reading the literature or you haven't talked to enough athletes. But uh, if that's the case, if we all truly believe that everyone needs to rest and the biggest problem is window of vulnerability, we're doing a terrible job, terrible job of making sure kids are safe. So we're, we're, we're catching the big concussions, we're not catching the little ones, we're not catching the little dings, not even to mention the problems with subconcussive hits that are clearly there and that's going to be the new area of research is that, gee, that 100G hit that caused symptoms, that's a problem, but that 99G hit that they say they're fine, guess what? It's also a problem. The brain still can't accept that much force. So um, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I think the next one is getting people off the field and getting them to understand that, that every ding is serious. The culture is changing, and the suck it up and get back in there is changing. It, you know, it's not where it needs to be, but this sort of thing takes time because we're changing the message that we've been giving everybody for the last 50 years, which is you're fine if you suck it up. And, and in fact, you're a hero if you get knocked out and you come back in the second half and you, and you play. And so now to change that, it takes, it takes time, but there are analogies that have shown that you can do this. Because, for example, we don't ask players to tough their way through neck injuries. Some point along the way we learned that that gets you paralyzed and therefore every athlete knows from a young age and their parents tell them and their coach tells them if your neck hurts, you can't feel your arms, you can't feel your legs, don't try to be a hero, don't try to play through it, get off the field. And, and so if we can do that with a neck which doesn't bleed and which doesn't cause dramatic pain, which doesn't impair you immediately if, you, if it's just a small, uh, small fracture of your neck. Um, so we can do that with the brain. And so it will take putting that in kids' heads and then, and then living that. And we're, it's good that we no longer glorify the NFL players and the uh, hockey players to say, uh, uh, I would play through it. I mean, luckily, when guys like Brian Urlacher said they had concussions, he was rightfully called uh, an idiot for saying that publicly uh, because kids do look up to him, even though they, apparently they shouldn't, uh, because we try to model our behavior after them. And so uh, people are aware of what they're saying and the message we're sending to kids. And even opportunities like um, you know, we were able to convince EA Sports to change how they handle concussions in Madden football. And uh, work with the CEO to say, look, six-year-olds are learning football not from watching games, but watching, playing your game. And if you let people go back in with concussions, which they currently did, that will send the wrong message. And we taught, you know, told them they can educate through it, and th thank goodness they agreed. And now the first exposure often kids have to learn the rules of football, they learn concussion, you're out for the day, and the announcers say, what a great idea it is to sit out.